Ja. 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 Welcome, welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. Thanks for the big applause, but I should applause you because we have a very special guest. We have Martin Bovee. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Martin Bovee. Martin Bovee in the house. He does many, many things. Among one of the big things you do is the Belgian Podcast Awards, but we're not going to talk about that today. No. I know it's it's ah, like your little baby. Okay, okay, yeah? okay. So where I want to go, where I want to go is two things. We want to talk about B2B Marketplace, which I never realized, but you just started talking to me about it. Yeah. So we're going to go there. And second... One of the most asked questions to me, I want to scale my business, I'm going to scale abroad. Let's go find partners, resellers, referral systems. Oh, the wonderful world of channel. The yes. wonderful world of channel, but your background is channel. So, yeah, right? absolutely. So let's go to uh, B2B marketplace. Yeah, B2B. Why? Why? Uh, yeah, why? Um, well, yeah, maybe the question is why not? I think uh, if you see in the B2C world, you see a lot of... Uh, I, I, I hope the crew still likes you after this one. <laughs> anyway, anyway, B two B marketplaces. Okay, B two B marketplaces. So you have B two C marketplaces. That's clear. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that I can throw yeah, yeah. is a cup, well, this so. one's gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, B two B marketplaces. So yeah, everybody knows B two C marketplaces. Uh, I don't have to explain that. No. So no. you also see a logical trend in the B2B market, uh, yeah. in the B2B space. Um, why is that? I think the population uh, that uses B2C to buy a lot of things is also the same population in the B2B. And they, want, they don't want to interact always with salespeople. Uh, they want it easy. Yeah. They want to go online and buy stuff. Yeah. So you see a rising trend of people wanting that, right? Yeah. So what's the problem then? Is it hard to start with it? Should, if I have a B2B business, do I want to be part of one of those platforms? Yeah, the big problem is a lot of people try to do it, yeah. but a lot of people fail. So you have more failed B2B marketplaces than marketplaces. But hang on, really the people work. that set up the marketplace, the people that join the marketplace, there's always a difference there, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you can imagine there can only be only a few B2B marketplaces. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So, when so can you give an market... example of a of marketplace so I have something in mind, an example? Uh, yeah, coincidentally, I'm responsible for a B2B marketplace. Ah. Uh, uh, connection, uh, connection one marketplace. How to scale that successfully is really to offer also value, a lot of value, eh? build trust. It's yeah. like, but it's what like, does it mean? Yeah. I mean, I wrote a book about this stuff, but what does it really? mean for ah, you? Really? Yeah, I see <laughs> some nice books here. Small publicity, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, it's like the interactions that you have in a normal physical world. Huh? You also want to have the same interaction on a B2B marketplace. Yeah. So you have a B2B marketplace where you can find the products, the licenses, all the stuff together. And then you have a human layer around that. So for example, um, bigger accounts, they get a digital sales agent. Of course. That sees what the, the customer is doing. You have a lot of customer insights and yeah. you react on that. What is the thing where buyers often disconnect is when there's too much information. Yeah. Or there isn't enough information. Yeah. So that's, that's really one. finding a balance yeah, uh, between yeah, those yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, uh, t uh, team, you, you feel that's a really deep expertise that you're hearing there. Huh? That's why we asked Martin. That's why we asked Martin. Oh. Okay, so back. Yeah. Back on track. B2B marketplace. Do you want we to learned that we cannot I click. Cook it for you if you want. Ah, it, no, it's for uh, Marcel. Marcel. Ah. <laughs> Marcel is sleeping. Okay, good. Back, back yeah. to B two B marketplace. Yeah. I have no clue where we were. <laughs> we were something uh, between finding the balance between yes, too much, too much and not enough. Not enough information. Okay. So, what would be your advice if I want to start? If I want no, not starting a, a marketplace, but if I want to go on this marketplace. It's, it's, it's a great question. You know, as a vendor, it, it's, it's a way to really quickly connect also to a lot of customers that are already on the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, but you still need to invest. You still need to invest in sales, in building trust, in, in doing certain campaigns, in providing information. So even if it's a B2B marketplace, you still need that human touch. So, so that would be also the shortcut. Human touch and scaling the sales you're currently doing actually Absolutely. that way. Okay. Absolutely. That immediately brings us to the second topic, which I really, really like, and I used to run tons and tons of partners, is partner management and reseller management. And you have a strong background in that. Absolutely. So maybe let's start with the, with the real problem. So I want to scale internationally. I want to scale bigger. 
and I'm thinking I'm going to cut my cost of sales. Mm. And what am I going to do? Yeah, you're laughing already. What I'm going to do, I'm going to look for partners. And I make this big partner contract and then I'm going to look for them and I sign. It takes nine months to find them and they sign the bloody contract and then nothing. And then they come to me and say, Michael, it's a failure. We've done this for two years. So is that your experience or what, am I, what, am I, what are they doing wrong? Yeah, they are not investing. God, man. <laughs> yeah, I told them they could it's, interrupt. It's a difficult day. I, I, I told them they could interrupt with intelligent things. So I have this if you want to. Uh, if, yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. So just go stand up. Yeah. Go, go okay. over there. Okay. Tell them. Okay. But, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think... Yes. I think you have them. Thank you. I solved that. <laughs> See what up. Stop talking about you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you for that interruption. And I would appreciate if you would leave me alone. Because I'm not going to do the cleaning. Serious now. For a second. Yeah. Because we're talking serious yeah. stuff. Yeah. Where were we? I have no clue. <laughs> me neither. Uh, <laughs> so we said, partners, I want to scale. I go there. Nothing happens. What am I doing wrong? It's quite easy. You need to invest in the people that are doing your sales. It's not a package that you can deliver and say, ah, good luck, goodbye, and those are your targets. No, you really, it's a part of your sales team. Yeah, I think what I see most people do wrong is then they go over there to a partner and they do the sales training during the sales team meeting, 20 minutes, and then they expect these people to know everything, while in most cases I see their own sales material being bad. So I'm True. saying, First fix that, make that properly, go there. And then one of the things I also say is make sure that you get a, a quick success because if you're training like a team of 20 or 25 salespeople, need, it's just... As a vendor, you need, also need to do the hard work. You need to yeah. do the hard work, make it easy for the salespeople, of the distributor, the resellers, to get those first wins in. And then you will see the traction because salespeople are focused on targets, on, on, on growth. But if it's difficult, yeah. if it's difficult, yeah, they will choose the easy way, uh, yeah. the, the product that they already know. And perhaps you are new vendors and they are already selling products like yours to the customer. So why would they mm. propose your product? In do, you, do you think they should? One of the things I keep saying is that make the material for them. Like you make, you make all the marketing material and you just inject their logo. You do that kind of... So you shortcut a lot of the work yeah. that is being done. A second thing that always comes back is like, should they be... Let me just ask you the question. Should the product I'm selling via partner be in the commission scheme of the sales of the partner? I would say yes. Yeah, if the product is big enough, if the demand yeah, is big enough. That's big, because what you do with facil facilitator products where you say, if I sell your product, I can sell 300 days of my services, which is not... I, I like it to interrupt Personally, It's really funny. He hasn't been able to say something for the next five seconds. <laughs> say something. Come on. Say something. Yes. <laughs> Say no, something. I'm I'm give it back. Give it back. Here. I have this thing. Right. <laughs> yes. So, hang on. Now, um, you, you don't know what you're going to say. You huh? should put it into the commission scheme of the salespeople. Yeah. But what I used to do in the past is really have a part of the commission scheme for the new vendors. Ah, that way. Yeah. And then you really intrinsically motivate people also to focus on these brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course, that yeah. way. What else? What You're do you see? I'm actually impressed. <laughs> it's rare. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually learning something. So. Uh, oh, nice, nice. Yeah, really get your hands dirty, and that means go together with the sales, call the top fifteen customers. So that really would work on that. That would imply marketing. that would imply that you have somebody really dedicated to do this. It's the only way, or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think though, the, I think the successful vendors. They really invest in that way. They have a person that's dedicated to that uh, to this customer. Going into a channel sales mode is an extension of your sales team, but these people need to feel your brand. They need to really focus on that. And if you don't focus on that, I think the salespeople will not, never focus on you, and it will not work unless you're Microsoft or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, of course. But then it's I easy. So one of the things that uh, outside of partners, because within partners, you have typically the levels, uh, the platinum, diamond, gold, they get more discount. One of the advisors I always give is give the discount at the end of the year, not in the beginning, because everybody's going to tell you, hey, I'm selling a lot. You can give me the big discount up front. I also like to tell them, like, hang on, make sure that you take part of the commission that you give them, that you do that as a rebate in marketing so that you can control the marketing machine and put logos, that kind of stuff. But what about... 
like referrals. A lot of people tell me, yeah, but I want a real partner that's committed and then they make these massive plans and I'm like, whoa, whoa, hang on, hang on, hang on. I like the smart start, like a bit smaller, a bit more. So. Uh, I think what you also mean is what is the maturity of the company. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you need other partners depending on the maturity and on the focus of your product. So it, it's something that is continuously growing and advancing. And that's another mistake that I see a lot of these people, uh, these vendors make, is uh, they, they try to choose uh, the biggest uh, distributor, the biggest partner, but that's often not the best choice. So you really need to think about selecting the right partners. One of the things I started noticing as I was scaling to certain countries was that if I would find the partner and I would hunt for them, it was most of the time a better choice than that people would come to me that I didn't know because they always saw a quick bucks or quick money in my solution where I knew it's never going to be more strategic or it's never going to really scale. It was like more a one-off or two-off. I think in, in, in channel sales, the people side of, of the business is even more important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you really do need to network that and elaborate also on that. Yeah. Any uh, final wisdom to share on B2B marketplace, on partner referrals? Well, I think... If you look at channel sales models, it's still a human business. It's the same like a B2B marketplace. A B2B marketplace is also part of a channel strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so really think about the strategy, think about who your customer is, and maybe the most important thing also is think about who has your money. Who has your money? <laughs> yeah, actually, whose customer is it? Because yeah. partners will tell me, no, no, they're not your customer, they're mine, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's a, con that's a battle that is yeah. continuously going on between even the vendor and the distributor and the reseller. But in the end, it's a battle between these different partners. They're working together, but there's always an edge. Yeah. An edge. And with that edge, we are going to wrap up. Thank you for watching the Sales Acceleration Show. Yes. Thanks, Martin, for coming. Thank you, Martin, for having now, me. Now, hang on, hang on. Then Tell me why. <laughs> yes. It doesn't Thank work, you. but okay. <laughs> I'll let him talk. I'll just pretend not to listen. Laat hem nog eens één minuut over podcasting. Wat moet ik vertellen? Niks. Ik weet niks van podcasting. <laughs>